Morning, as we are now less than a week away from a possible federal government shutdown. A bit earlier on this morning, maybe 30 minutes ago, we did hear from House Republicans as they spoke about that possible shutdown and some other issues here. Let's play that news conference for you here, raw and unfiltered. Good morning, everyone. A new national NBC poll shows voters overwhelmingly trust Republicans over Democrats on the economy, border security, and crime. And on the question of who is best fit to handle the economy, Republicans have a 21-point margin, the highest margin in the history of when the question has been asked. In addition, according to an even more recent morning consult poll, voters say that the Democrat Party is more extreme than Republicans by an almost double-digit margin. And of course, this weekend, a new ABC Washington Post poll shows Joe Biden trailing the Republican frontrunner, President Trump, by 10 points. Republicans continue to show why we were brought to Washington to be good stewards of taxpayer dollars and combat the many crises created by Joe Biden and far-left Democrats' policies, especially the raging border crisis. Last month alone, our southern border saw over 230,000 encounters. It is time for Democrats to work with Republicans to secure the border, and the majority of voters agree. Last night was a big night. House Republicans passed the rule to bring four appropriations bills to the House floor for consideration. These appropriation bills include many conservative wins for the American people and rein in extreme Democrats' reckless spending. Our Homeland Security Appropriations Bill secures the border by increasing the number of Border Patrol agents to 22,000 and finishing the wall on our southern border. It also prohibits funding for Joe Biden's failed open border policies that have led to a border crisis across America. Our defense appropriations bill, it eliminates woke DOD programs. It cuts $20 billion from Joe Biden's wasteful budget and redirects funding to war fighting needs. And it gives our brave service members a historic pay raise. Our state and foreign ops appropriations bill protects life, by including the expanded Mexico City policy. It prohibits funds for groups facilitating illegal immigration to our border, and it counters communist China's aggression. And our ag appropriations bill prohibits foreign adversaries like communist China from buying up American farmland. This is an important bill that I've worked on for a number of years. And it eliminates funding for radical Green New Deal policies, and it terminates Joe Biden's waters of the U.S. rule. From protecting American values at home to ensuring our national security abroad, House Republicans are committed to curbing Joe Biden's reckless spending and delivering results for the American people, especially securing the border. I now am honored to hand it over to one of our appropriators, Michael Cloud, from the state of Texas. Michael. Well, thanks for being here. And I uh, thought I'd take a, a second to talk to you about maybe what you don't see happening. Of course, anytime you come to a funding deadline, all the attention goes to that. But I wanted to talk about a little bit the process of how we got here. One thing you're seeing in the Republican majority is we are rewriting the muscle memory of how Congress works. And sure, it's harder to run a House when you actually get to read the bills because people have input on the bills. It's harder to run it when you're offered amendments and and people get to have say into the bills. But And it's also harder when you don't just automatically go to the CR to omnibus showdown. But this is what the Republican majority is committed to doing, committed to passing appropriate bills, committed to working the process, committed to restoring yeah. this government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And that's one of the things that I'm really, really proud of. These bills are conservative. Uh, these bills are what many have called the, the many years since it's, we've had the cleanest comb through uh, of these appropriations bills where we've gotten back to just putting this government, right-sizing our government and getting us back to the priorities that this government should be working on. Things like strengthening our military, getting our military focused on its job of protecting and securing our liberties and defending our interests, getting our borders secure and to continuing to do that. Only in D.C. do you get to uh, get away with measuring success by how much money you spend. We're turning the corner on that, realizing the financial uh, crisis that we're facing as a nation and making sure that we 
rightfully rein in spending while we meet the priorities of this nation. And so it's good to see these approach bills moving forward. And uh, I, I hope you can appreciate the, the good work that's going into doing this differently because the American people are tired of the status quo of kicking the can down the road. And uh, the, you can see that the, our majority is working to make sure that happens for the American people. We'll now hear from our whip, Tom Emmer. Hey, hey. thank you. Uh, I identify with uh, both uh, the conference chair's remarks and Michael Cloud's uh, remarks, but for me, it's a big day in Congress uh, for more reasons than what uh, we've talked about so far. Today, SEC Chair Gary Gensler is going to testify before the House Financial Services Committee. And boy, does he have a lot to answer for. Under Gary Gensler's leadership, I would say failed leadership, the SEC has been an incompetent cop on the beat. Throughout his career, Gensler has been... All right, so you're listening to the House Republicans. They are speaking on a variety of topics, including the government shutdown. 